Okay, so again, this is Roger, fairest fair user in the land, and I am showing information presented by Don Lincoln and Fermilab, and I dispute what they have to say, or at least I have something to comment on, which is called, you know, trans transformational information. Because I'm transforming everything that they're saying. If they agree with me, well, everything transforms. If they don't agree with me, let's debate it. That's all I'm asking for. The speed of gravity is a question that has puzzled scientists for centuries. The first sophisticated theory of gravity was developed by Sir Isaac Newton and first published way back in 1687. According to Newton, gravity was transmitted everywhere across the universe at infinite speed. However, Newton's theory of gravity isn't the newest and most successful theory of gravity. In 1915, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which interprets gravity as the distortion of both space and time. In his theory, these distortions could change the shape of things like stars and planets, and, of course, space itself. These changing distortions would then move through the cosmos by means of a phenomenon called gravitational radiation. Okay, first of all, I want to point out the fact that everything he says is theory. Everything is a theory. I show material evidence. I, am, I, I, I do theory, yes, absolutely. But I back it up by material evidence. If there's no material evidence to support the theory, the theory is not... It means nothing. It's just like saying saying anything. You say anything you want. It's just a theory. It doesn't mean anything. If I can show these gravitational waves, now we're into a whole different story. No longer is it theory. Okay, so he's talking about gravitational radiation. Something that radiates through the universe and looks like it's gravity. He postulated that the speed of gravitational waves was identical to the speed of light. Thus, Einstein would... I am going to show that that is not correct. Th well, it might be correct. That's where we need to do a little discussion. Because I can show the actual gravitational wave. And I can show the separation of the particles that make light and that make mass. Light has no mass. The dark matter has mass and no burn. The light has burn and no mass. The dark matter has mass and no burn. I'll show you this. I could, this is why I do these things, because I show these things. I don't just guess at them. I would say that the speed of light and the speed of gravity are the same. So who's right? Well, Einstein and Newton are both strong contenders in any contest for the title of most influential physicist of all time. I mean, I would pay good money to watch those two guys debate, but when you get right down to it, it doesn't much matter what either of them think. Physics is an empirical science. All right, physics is an empirical science, and answering a question requires a measurement. It at least requires that you know what you're looking at. And answering the question requires a measurement. So how would you measure the speed of gravity? Well, first and foremost, you need to be able to detect gravitational waves, and that's hard. Actually, it's not that hard, Don. Let's look into that first. Okay, so don't forget, this is a de debate between myself, Roger Spur, and Don Lincoln. Now, I am using his own words. From 2013, they found these two particles, which are the smallest particles that they can find that exist. And Don says this is a fixed, hard, solid particle, never changes. And this one is glowy and has no mass to it at all. And this is massive. Now, Don here, I'll just cut to the conclusion. It says, in summary, the extended particle, which is this black one, has a fixed size. It's just solid. That's all it is. But they may have a fuzzy edge, which they do, and that is the color. The fuzzy edge is the color. 
The point-like particles are mathematical with zero size, and basically they're no mass at all. But even zero size particles have an extended field due to the effect of the field surrounding them. Absolutely correct. And I show this. So I'm not just guessing. Now, and then he says, want a phrase defined? Have a question? Email today at fnal.gov. And I'm going to want everybody to do this. All my followers should email Don and ask him why or if you would please debate me or talk to me or have some kind of interaction with me because I've been trying for seven years and I can show exactly what he's saying. This is the problem. I can't believe that he doesn't want to discuss his own statements. Now this is the other thing that I wanted to discuss with Don was just a quantum foam which he says empty space isn't empty. It's completely saturated, he says, with particles that we can't really understand, we don't know about. He says the quantum foam is real. The microcosm is in continual motion. And then he says, a scientist says, the universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine. That's the problem. They can't let their mind roam outside of the standard model. We have to get away from it. And here is the new model, which says there is nothing but dipoles. And an electron is a dipole. It has the electron, the burny part, and it has a pushy part. Let's see if I can demonstrate that, which I can. Okay, what you're about to see shows these gravity waves that Don Lincoln is talking about. And in addition, it supports my dipole electron flood model which means that there is nothing but electron and muons attached together which create our basic unit called an electron. And electrons make everything. You just keep adding them together. Two of them added together is a photon. Uh, 1835 or so is what we would call a proton. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So every single thing has to change, even the periodic chart. This no longer is correct. Hydrogen is not one big proton and one little electron. Hydrogen is 1,835 electrons in the core, which makes it a dipole with a positive, one extra, which gives it a positive attractiveness. It wants one more to become 1,836 and become neutral. But it can't get in because the core is holding it just barely at bay. That's why hydrogen is so explosive. Because when it blows up, it doesn't just blow up into one proton. It blows up into 80, 1,835 electrons. That's what makes a proton. So that's why hydrogen is so explosive. And then you get up to helium. It's like 7,352, something like that, electrons in a ball. And as you get up here, there are hundreds of thousands. So all of that's got to change. So we got to start from scratch because everything there is is a dipole. We're going to get into this. But let me just show you that I can prove what I'm talking about right now. Here goes the atomic bomb. The first thing that's going to happen is they crush everything together so hard that as they escape, everything fractures and goes into pieces. And the white is the stuff that pushes hardest, quickest. That'll hit here, burn the house. Next thing comes that, and that knocks the house down. All right? Let's huff and puff and blow this house down. All right, here we go. we got to turn that off. Here it goes. Boom. Watch that. See that? Boom. You can see what's happening? I just turned this and turned it off. But we're not going to see anything happen here at all other than the white particles burn everything that they contact. They don't push anything. They just burn it. Look, they're just burning. Burning. Now what happens? Boom. Bam. Now, now watch. You see it coming back? Why is it coming back? There's still a bunch of black stuff back here. The white went, then the black followed it. But there has to be a bunch of black stuff back way in the beginning, so everything coming back to it. So we know, I'm starting to think that there is no relationship between the amount of white and the amount of black. The black is separate totally from the white. But on Earth, it's, it's attached because of gravity. Gravity forces the electrons to go towards the Earth to collect on the surface of the Earth. That's why the static goes, lightning goes, electricity goes, Earth, ground. So what is inside the Earth? Dark matter. It has to be. It has to be. This is gravity. Dark matter is gravity. 
and there's more dark matter inside of our Earth than there is on the surface. So when we come up and we go snap, and it goes to ground, the dark matter says, yeah, come on down, come on down, boom, and it attaches. That's why you don't have these holes like they, show, they showed in the zero gravity that the Russians did. Okay, you did see the part about Don said where the black particle never changes, it's a fixed particle, but it has a glowy edge. Well, the glowy edge is green in this case, the other one was red. The white particle gets big and it gets small. See, it's expanding here, and very soon it will flip. Just before it turns into a photon, it's a tau. Now, let me show you a clearer shot of that. You see that? I believe this is coming through the air this way. I think this is a little more puffed up than that one. So it depends on which direction it's going, how puffy it gets. Now, these are the black, and they have a little fuzz around them, which is the green, just like Don Lincoln says. I, I don't dispute what he's saying. Okay, I believe this is a photon of light. And this, just prior to being a photon here, is a tower neutrino because it's accelerating. The photons, you don't see them. You don't see these anywhere else. The only reason you see it because it's dead in line with the Venturi. And that's because, so it's stacking up against itself. Push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. So you end up with tau, then you end up with photons, then you end up with separation right at the Venturi, the black and the white separate. So it's, all, every particle's right there in front of you. And then right after the Venturi, they come right back together because the black has to reattach to the white. All right, this is, uh, this is a little beyond what they're doing at CERN and Fermilab. This shows the actual magnetic fields of dipoles. And this is, these are planets. This is not just some little magnet. This is a moon. This, I believe, is, is um, Venus. And I'll tell you exactly why. But you notice the black and the white, black and white, black and white, black and white. They're all dipoles. And the reason is they're spinning their magnetic particles against all the magnetic particles that are in space. And it's push to shove, push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. And that's what causes this. You see these little bip, 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 bip. It's just like there's so much radiation at the bottom that they're, you know, and then it just lays off, and then it fades out to nothing. Now, the reason I say this is Venus is Venus spins backwards, and this is the only one I have seen that has a reverse and a forward magnetic field. You see this field here? Way outside of the other one? These two fields in the same particle. Two fields. And there is something going on here in the center. This is not like your normal dipole. There's some other action going on where I can see there's secondary rub. That should be nice and similar to this, but there's like a, a secondary glow to it. <laughs> Here's another one he did. I mean, this is, this is Dylan Carpenter. This is Rod Warren's nephew. He's over in New Zealand. Rod is in Australia. And I lost track of both of them. I can't find them. They bumped me off of Facebook, so I no longer can get to see anybody there. I lost track of a lot of people. So, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> they block me for copyright violation. I am a fair user. I have no copyright restrictions. None. I am reporting on things for transformative information. So copyright rules do not apply to me. I'm not stealing people's information to make, you know, to steal it. I'm using it to comment for educational purposes because what they're looking at now they have no clue and nobody knows about these fields they just I think Rod and, and Dylan and I may be the only ones that ever saw these other than the one people that saw my posts he's got some kind of a app in there that shows the the magnetic lines and this is push to shove push to shove push to shove and you can only push to shove push to shove and then it's over and that's what we have here. Now, in the case of a star, they, all of their stuff comes out and never comes back. Our stuff goes out and pretty much comes back. And again, this is the moon. And this is blue. You see why it's blue? Blue is a higher frequency. Well, this is going to get, this gets really deep, so... But I'm showing you stuff that is deep, and I think it deserves a little discussion, that's all. 
Okay, the only thing I'm asking for is a, a quick discussion of if this is an increase in energy. If it is, we may be able to get free energy right now. It's because the dipole nature of the particles is not understood and being able to squirt them all day long at a substrate, I think we can get free energy, just continuous, perpetual free energy. If, it's, if, if this is correct and the, the energetic values that they talk about between muons and electron showers, if you can create them, which is fission and fusion, Precisely what we did. This is fission. And back here is fusion back together. The energetic values here are staggering if they're true. And if they are true, right here, we should be able to put some kind of a solar collector in there. Right here. And run this down into our battery stacks. And, or into tires or airplanes or boats or whatever you want. This is energy. It's just raw, raw, extremely powerful energy, if this is correct. Between here and here, we've increased it thousands of times, the energetic value. If that's true, that's free energy. That's what I'm really hoping for. You know, this is really the crazy thing. These are the particles that Don Lincoln wants to see, and we found them. Absolutely, no question. And this is the red one. Then the green and the blue are exactly the same, only they have that different glow around the black particle, and they have that different color to them. That's just the speed of the spin shows the color. That's the relationship, is the impact value, is the speed of the spin. Now, I contacted Don and I said, we found these particles. Not only that, the Russians have separated them in space and created a black hole. Now, I sent him and I copied the Russians all at the same time. I was hoping to get an interaction and it did not work out well. But this is exactly the two particles that Don Lincoln wants to see. is the black one that is the fixed particle and the white one that can glow and, and it has no mass at all. Can I show that it has no mass? Yes, I can. Can I show that that's heavy as hell? Yes, I can. Can I show that we separated it? Yes, I can. There's the black, there's the white showers. Exactly what Fermi Lab's little doodle says here. Muon neutrino, electron neutrino. Attached together is these. This is a photon. Half of that is really an electron. Nobody ever knew the dark matter was attached. This is the carrier. This has all the weight. I'll show you this knock a house down. And here's what it is. We separated them by putting them through a venturi. We can do this all day long and squirt these electron showers onto a substrate and collect free energy. I don't see any reason we can't. Luminosity means you have increased the power. Power is what we want. It started out almost dark, and that is as luminous as you get. That means we have increased the value. This took no energy whatsoever. So we increase the value with no additional input. Now let me show you how I can prove that Don Lincoln is right. He's right. That's a pusher. That's a burner. Here it comes. Now, I'll explain this later, but what the Russians did is in a zero gravity in space, it's, you, they're not being pulled down. Gravity sucks white. This is gravity. Gravity. That's gravity right there. It's a black hole. And, and in space, they can separate. The black separates from the white. I just showed you we can separate them on Earth by putting them through the Venturi. But in space, they can separate all by themselves. They put in charged particles into a vacuum chamber in zero gravity and the black hole showed up in the center. So I copied Don. I said, Don, look at this. And I said to the Russians, I said, you created a black hole because they freaked out. It says during the experiment, we contacted the Earth guys. Nobody could believe it. A guy from Max Planck locked himself in his office for three weeks because <laughs> he saw this. He freaked out. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. They expected it to be all in stripes like this. In, in boxes, everybody pushing everybody away, staying in their own regions. No, it pushed all the black to the center. And this is exactly what happened. These are the white particles. These are the, the, the electron portion. They push the black to the center. Here's the black. So they surround the black. Right? And this, is, this happens here on Earth. 
we don't realize it, but every mat, every piece of matter, all we ever see is the glowy part pushing back at us, radiating. But inside of every glowy part is black matter. Now, can I prove that? Yes, I can. <laughs> I'm a material scientist. I don't just guess at things. I don't say, oh, this is the theory and everybody's got to live by that standard model. No, absolutely not. It's not correct, and I'll show you it's not correct, because everything there is is a dipole, including a nuclear explosion. 